This requires patience and it isn't for everybody. What's up YouTube? The title gave it away. We're going to be working on setting up a dubia colony for your, your feeders. Uh, so this obviously isn't for everybody because not a lot of people like to keep bugs in their house. They don't mind having the bugs to feed to the animals, but once they have to start breeding them, they get a little weird about it. Um, and it, it's okay. It's not, like I said, it's not for everybody, but I personally like having dubia roaches as a colony. I used to have three colonies before. I think each colony had about 600 adults in it, but I ended up with like a huge infestation of gnats and I just fed everything off. Um, and I never got back into it. So I figured I set one up just to show you and kind of talk about the process. So I want to show you what a male looks like. I want to show you what a female dubia roach looks like. I want to talk about how long it takes for them to get to breeding size, as well as how long it takes for you to actually be able to feed from your colony. So first things first, my, everybody's going to have a different opinion. My opinion is just based off of what I've experienced. I like to have a ratio at about one male to six females. Um, I used to, I tried the one to 10, uh, so one male to 10 females. There wasn't enough males for the production to actually have a difference. So I dropped it down to uh, about one to seven, one to six, and I, I, I got good results there. Um, they say about one to four is a good ratio, but I've had one to four before, and the males were eaten because they were competing for females. So I think one to six, one to seven is the preferred ratio. Today, based off the colony that I bought, I'm at one, what is that? There's 90, there's 100 females in this colony and 20 males. So it's one to five. Um, so I do hope to keep adding females and males to the colony. So let's, uh, this is just a disclaimer for you right now. It takes about six months before you can actually start feeding from your colony. And about a few months after they have became mature adults, that's usually when you'll start seeing babies get laid or Technically, they hatch. They're, they're, it's, a, it's a different process than what you usually see. They carry the eggs inside their bodies, and then they hatch inside, and they start coming out of the mom like that. So it's technically laid, but it's technically hatched. So <laughs> it really just depends. However, the way this works is it takes a few months for them to get up to size. Um, I'll put the exact, I can't remember the exact time frame, but I'll put it on the screen here. Then it takes a few months for them to start giving birth. And then after that, it takes another few months for you to start feeding off your your, uh, your roaches, off your colony. So if you buy them already adults, then you only have to wait a few months before you start seeing actual babies in the, in the colony there. Some of the colonies that you can buy online usually have different sizes as well as the male and the female. I personally think that if you buy a bigger colony without the smaller sizes um, so let's say you buy 20 adult males and 100 females usually that's a better result than you buying five males and 20 females or something like that i think there's colonies out there that are even smaller than that but personally that's the way i like to start and then as i buy roaches for my animals over the months until i can start feeding from that colony i'll add a few in there every so often and that's the best way that i've seen setting up a colony so I'm gonna set up the colony right now. You're gonna meet me on the floor because I had to do this on the floor. Uh, meet me on the floor and I'll show you everything that I got and everything that I got going on uh, for this colony. So so first things first, you gotta have a black tote. You can do this in a clear tote as well, but I prefer the black totes because they can't see anything out of it so they don't worry about lights or anything. Um, dubia roaches, they prefer being obviously enclosed in the space where they can do whatever they want without any movements, without any lights or anything interfering with their survival right their lifestyle so i prefer the black tote this is a 17 gallon tote so it's not very big but the reason i prefer these big black totes uh i have bigger totes but I, since this is a smaller colony i don't want to take up too much space with a smaller colony but this will give them enough space for them to obviously take over and do whatever they want in the six months that it takes them to actually start working first things first you got to have some egg cartons um, so these are egg cartons. You can buy these on Amazon. You can buy these from people that actually sell the roaches. 
I get these locally. Uh, so there's a person called the Roach Lady. I've bought roaches from her before. Uh, she's a smaller roach breeder, so she's not, she can't really handle what I require for breeding bearded dragons. So she does breed roaches. She just obviously can't breed as many as I need for. I need about 10,000 roaches a month. Or actually, no, I need about 10,000 roaches every two weeks in order to sustain the babies during hatching season. So uh, that's another reason why I'm doing this is because usually, I used to be able to do about 10,000 roaches off my colonies every month and only have to buy so often. Uh, but obviously this year I had to, I was spending about two, $300 a week on roaches, which is not fun. Um, so let's set this up. Here's some baggies with some roaches in there already. So I'm just going to put them to the side. What I like to do is first I got to see how well this is going to fit in here. Um, so this is probably going to be touching the top of the, uh, the tub here. So I'm actually going to cut one layer off of this. Then I got to cut all 20 of these egg cartons uh, at that same level, uh, just to make it not touch the top of the tub because the reason you don't want them touching the top of the tub is you're going to have to put ventilation on the tub. That way there's airflow. Um, you don't, I, people will put screen mesh and all that on here. You technically don't have to. Um, the only reason you would have to is if you think they're going to get out through the top, but they can't climb the sides. So there's no reason for them to have to climb to the top, uh, or be able to get out through these holes here. So I don't necessarily want to put mesh right now. If I see that they're getting out somehow, then I'll put mesh, but most likely they won't because I will obviously be taking off a layer so they can't really get out if they get to the top here. So I'm going to cut these and then we're going to set everything up. All right. We got them cut. So technically you can interlock these like this and uh, they won't fall, but while that works, I feel like sometimes they get these, if there's a lot of humidity in here, these will get flimsy. So what I do is I like to add some cardstock paper in between them. Um, most likely they're going to chew through some of this, which is fine, but this, you can buy like a hundred sheets for like a few dollars. So it's not too bad. And then you'll see that it kind of overlaps perfectly. So while it works very good, um, like I said, they will chew through it. So it's just a matter of how often you want to buy some paper. But this is not regular printer paper. Like I said, this is like that cardstock stuff. So I'll start lining everything up. I probably won't need all 20 egg cartons. And um, like I said, they do get flimsy sometimes um, based off humidity and all that. And obviously they can chew and do with all that kind of stuff as well. So you may need extra. So just keep going until you fill it up. If you don't want to buy that paper, you can get the cardboard. Like whenever you order a box, obviously people get boxes all the time if they're ordering on Amazon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the only thing about that is that sometimes the babies get inside of the box. Oh, look, a roach was getting out, getting there. Sometimes the babies can crawl inside of the, the fiberboard or the cardboard and it makes it harder to get them out when you're sorting. So I'll use the paper just to make it easier on me later on. And um, technically I didn't need to add that all that much in there. So you do want to have a little bit of space in the front uh, for your food and your water and all that you add on there. So I might be taking some of these out. So now I've got quite a few more egg cartons uh, that I can use in a different tub if I want to set up more colonies, which I probably will. Um, so now we're just going to dump the bugs. So in this particular colony, I'm starting off with 100 females and we are starting off with 20 males. And then I do have some bugs that I ordered for my feeders and some of them are already getting pretty big so i'll throw these in there as well and i won't count those i'll just kind of go off whatever happens happens you know sometimes you'll see these little black beetles that's cleaner crew uh, those cleaner crews i personally don't like them but it doesn't hurt to have them so i'll leave them in there for now and if they become a nuisance then i'll take them out and by nuisance, I mean they'll start eating the bugs if they don't get fed enough. So, not only do you have to feed the roaches to stay alive, but then you also have to feed 
the beetles so they don't eat your roaches so your roaches can stay alive so it becomes a, a lot of work just to keep your roaches alive um, there appears to be quite a few smalls in here already so they might have gave birth or whatever whatever you want to say hatched them out uh, during the trip to get here so that could have been it but, or they probably just sent a bunch of there's not a bunch there's probably like maybe 20 smalls in here so this is where we are right now uh, I'll probably add a few more egg cartons here that are lower and then the food and the water and stuff will go over here and I'll show you how to set all that up but here's where we are as of right now so based on what I see in here there's a few roaches that are dead which happens obviously in transportation which is fine um, so it looks like I've already lost three females so at least it was a 97 um, they may have thrown extra in here like I said I didn't really count so they may have thrown extra in here just to kind of accommodate for any deaths during transportation so we'll see what happens but um why didn't y'all tell me his light wasn't working I had a, it go in there and screw it right I don't know how long it's been off like that it was fine yesterday so I guess this morning all right well it's back on enough of that all right so we got this set up all that's left now is just putting the food bowl and stuff in here um as far as the food goes I personally prefer just throwing fruits and veggies in there and letting them go crazy with that stuff. But if you want to use the roach, roach chow or whatever, that's fine too. Now, you can just throw the food at the bottom if it's just fruits and veggies and you're going to pick them out once they start going bad. Or you can get, get like a little, honestly at Walmart, here I'll show you what, what they are. So it's these things, um, I use these for my dragons as well, but all you got to do is cut a piece out to like the flat area and just throw your food in there and that way they can crawl in there when they want to eat but then the food can't fall out so I wish I had extras so I could show you but um, I mean it's literally just cutting out a piece like that and that's all you really need for your and then they can crawl under if they want hiding or whatever but that's what I like to do you can do two of these they'll fit in here side by side or you can use one of these same thing just cut it so they can crawl in, cut it to the flat spot, um, and same thing, they'll be able to get in there and get the food. This will probably work better for the water crystals if you decide to go the water crystal route. But I use fruits and veggies, so I don't actually have to hide, put any water crystals in here. The other thing you can do is grab a sponge, wet the sponge, same thing, just throw it in here and they'll drink off the sponge. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's just how it is with the sponge. Um, You'll just have to re-wet re it whenever it starts getting a little dry. But it's a lot easier to do the sponge trick than it is to buy water crystals all the time and rehydrate them and all of that. So there's that. I guess we can go back up there now and uh, start talking about how often they produce and stuff like that. So dubia roaches, they can give birth every 30 to 45 days which about a month to a month and a half, they'll give birth. The problem with that is the number varies widely from a few babies all the way to like 20 something babies. So that's one thing. The babies also can get eaten. So that's another thing. Um, so let's say you have, I have a hundred females or 97 females. Let's just round up a hundred females. And they're giving me 20 babies every month. That means every month I'm making 2,000 babies. Not enough, right? But if I'm starting like this and I'm letting them go for six months, that means in the six months I should have, should, in the six months I should have uh, 12,000 babies or 12,000 roaches in there, give or take, because obviously some may die off, some may get eaten, and then so on and, go, and so forth. Do you want to let it go crazy for six months? That's up to you. I personally like to at least sort it once a month. That way, if there, there's, I try to, like I said, keep it to one male to six to seven females. Um, so if it gets to where there's one male to every five females or below, then I'll start taking males out. So I do have to check 
all of that before I let it go for six months because I don't want it to go for six months. And then after the six months, I have 200 males and 400 females. That's one to two. That's not going to work. So I have to make sure that I'm keeping it pretty consistent as far as the ratio goes. It takes a long time. It's not very quick, but it does take a while for female babies to get up to size before you can actually sex them. So it really does matter how long you lay your, leave your roaches alone after they have been hatched or laid or whatever. And then you can start feeding off if you really want to after the six months. That's just my, my tip to you. But let's say you start with five males and 20 females and they're giving birth every, uh, every month or every month and a half or whatever, 20 babies. That means you're getting 400 babies every, every month, which is a good bit, right? So if you let that go for six months, then you're getting about 200, 2,400 in your, in your tote. It, it's a cycle. It's a really good cycle. Um, so if I, let's say, leave it for six months, and then after six months, I split it into six colonies. Next season, I should be able to figure out based off sorting and everything. So next season, based off six colonies or whatever in six months. So six months from right now would put me at what? It would put me in March. So in March, I'm already going to start having babies hatching, probably before that, actually. Uh, so I already have babies hatching by then. So I will be able to figure out, hey, how many colonies can I do? Uh, can I start feeding off of this colony? And if I can, how much can I feed off? So those are all questions you're going to have to ask if that's what you're wanting to do. If you're just trying to feed one animal, you can do a colony that starts off with five males, 20 females. It, honestly, you can probably do a colony that starts with one male, six females. But that's not really going to be much going on there so personally the smallest colony i would start off with is five males and 20 25 females possibly more females if you can up to 30 females 35 females really um and that'll honestly get you a good ratio to sustain your colony for six months and then you can start feeding off of it regularly obviously your dragon's going to get older and it's not going to eat as much so if you are setting up a colony before your dragon gets there, this is a very good tip to do is set up a colony before your dragon gets there. If you're patient like me, if you're not patient, it's going to hurt you to just see your colony sitting there producing babies that you can't feed off. But so that matters. Um, a few tips to make sure your colony produces very well. First tip is make sure that the temperature inside of your tub is about 90 degrees. You don't want it too hot and you don't want it too cold. Too cold will make it slow down. Too hot will kill off the bugs. So 90 degrees is a sweet spot there. Luckily for me, once I move into the new house, I will actually have a dedicated closet or technically a room. That's going to be my incubator for my ball pythons, which is going to stay at about 89, 89 and a half, 90 degrees. So I'm just going to throw them in there with the ball python uh, clutches. And that's going to be really what I keep my Nubia roaches in whenever the time comes. For now, I'll just put a heat mat under them with a thermostat and that'll keep them at about 89, 90 degrees in here. Um, the other thing is oranges. This is a positive and a negative thing if you do give your roaches oranges. Positive is the oranges make your Nubia roaches reproduce a lot more than if they were not on oranges. The negative thing about it is Oranges and Nubia roaches are not a good mixture when you're feeding them to your bearded dragons. Um, it's like the citrus, the citric acid or something creates like a poisonous type of stuff. I don't know what the terminology is. I just know it's not good for your bearded dragon when they eat a Nubia roach that has eaten oranges. So I like to feed them carrots, uh, apples and stuff like that, bananas. Uh, no acidic foods or anything like that is what I try to stay away from. Um, whenever I'm feeding my dubia roaches you do whatever you want to do when you're doing the roach chow other than that If you're doing fruits and veggies to stay away from the acidic stuff because it's not going to be good for your dragons But if you're waiting six months to even feed them to your dragons You can feed them the oranges and the acidic stuff Up to like three four months and then two months or so don't feed them that that way you can ensure that everything that's in there has no acidic nothing inside of their system so if you are trying to boost your colony uh, up until about four months or so you can with the oranges after that I suggest not doing the oranges um, so if you do have several colonies or whatever the oranges can be used in the colonies you're not feeding from it really just depends on what you're doing 
Now, I will be making a video for my members, uh, so on YouTube or Patreon. I'll be making a video about how much you can actually make breeding dubia roaches. Because like I said, if I'm starting with 100 females, by the six months time frame, I should have about 12,000, give or take 2,000 or so. So it could be 6,000, really, who knows, it, just based off what it is. But I could have 12,000 babies in there, or 12,000, not even babies at that point, because it's six months usually how long it takes for them to be full grown. So it could be 2,000 um, adults, and then, you know, the rest of them will be babies. But it really just depends. So because I will be making that video, this is where this video ends. Uh, so if you're interested in learning about the aspect of selling dubia roaches, how much you can sell them for, how to price them, and all of that. Now, I'm not a dubia roach breeder, but I sure as hell buy a lot of dubia roaches, so I know what the pricing is um so if you're looking into getting into the breeding business of dubia roaches go join my membership or my on patreon or youtube um, and i'll give you all the details so this is where this ends and you know what it's not where this ends i forgot to show you a male and a female dubia roach and that's where that'll that'll end uh so here we go all right so in this little cup here i have a male and a female dubia roach like i said it could take several months for them to get to this stage so usually about six months is when they're fully uh, ready to be so that one flipped over uh, so the males will be fully winged and the females won't have wings so I'm gonna uh, bring you closer in to see no nope, get in here to see what they look like so this is the male you see how it has the wings um, stay in there female these are the wings so that's the male throw him back in and this is the female so females have really really small wings technically they don't have wings and they're also pretty big compared to the males now another thing i like to tell people is if you look at the bottom of the roach you can see that there's not a little division here on the bottom uh section or the bottom section of the abdomen adam abdomen tail whatever there's not a split versus males i'll show you a male now there is a split so let me show you side by side so there you go female is on the left males on the right you can see that the female doesn't have come on focus the female doesn't have a split on the lower section of the abdomen versus the male versus the male does have that split right there on the bottom section of the abdomen it's hard to see but there's gonna be a little section at the bottom of the abdomen where they will have that split so there will be that section at the bottom of the abdomen on the males, and that's where that split is. Um, if you see that split, that means it's a male. If you don't see that split, that means it's a female. Now, while that may be important to some people if they want to start sexing before they're fully winged, that's up to you. Most people don't want to touch their bugs that closely. Uh, technically, you're supposed to wear gloves. I just didn't feel like putting gloves on because I could just put hand sanitizer on real quick after touching them. Um, People can develop an allergic reaction or whatever over time to these bugs. So it's good to at least have hand sanitizer. If not, put on some gloves, put on a face mask. All those things are important. Right now, there's no dusting in there because they're freshly just put in there. So once they start actually producing that dubia dust or roach dust, I will start putting on a face mask and wearing gloves. Because in the past, when I had all those colonies, I did have a problem with wheezing and all that stuff because i did get an allergic reaction to these bugs but it's been a while i'm not even feeling it right now because it's been like two years since i had a dubia rose colony but it is what it is just make sure you take care of yourself that way you can take care of your animals and as always if you made it this far into the video don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that i put out in the future as always peace don't forget to join the memberships